Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Colin, uh, I'm not going to lie, my brain's kind of fried right now. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sober. Everything's good, but... <laughs> Um, I don't think anyone was questioning that, but I'm just, now just, we can only imagine. <laughs> just in case, yeah, anyone was was questioning. No, I'm good. Uh, but uh, I've just been talking basketball and looking at basketball in brackets for the entire day, and and then I found out we had we had an AAU tournament this weekend, and we lost in the sem- semis in a bracket in a in a tournament with only five teams. So mm, that's not, not great, good. not great there. So we have a lot of work to do, uh, practice tonight. So I just basketball is the only thing in this in this noggin right now. Who'd you so. pick for your for your March Madness bracket? Oh, okay, yeah, well, we won't talk about that. Um, I don't know yet. I'm still. I mean, I already saw it because I accidentally logged in as you on ESPN, so I know who you picked. No, I don't know. Well, I, I've changed it since you changed it. All right. So then, who who is it right now? Well, my final right now is Baylor versus Houston. Okay, and and just so then the people know, you only do one bracket, right? Yes, I only like do any, one. So like all all people should. I've changed. Yes, I've changed two of my final four teams already. I'm not. I'm not gonna have Baylor win it. I might have used to win it. I don't know. I don't. I'm scared. I so, just lock mine in randomly. But yeah, uh, go for you. Go go through your your big your big ones. No, we we don't have to spend too long on it. But basically, yeah, I've true. been uh going through it, Colin. What's the craziest pick you have? I have FAU repeating a Final Four appearance, Texas Tech getting a Big 12 uh, tournament rematch against Houston and winning. And then, uh, I mean, I have a lot of 12-5 upsets. I think I have three. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I think I have three of the 12-5s. And then I have uh, Texas Tech winning it all over Scott Drew in the Baylor Bears. So Grant can cement his legacy. Let me tell you, this is the this is the first year where I flew through the. Normally, I sit there and I really I like I look at their schedules, yeah, and I go through it, and it just sucks every year. Um, so I think my best bracket in the last five years was when I picked Arizona to win it all. They lost in the first round, and then uh, I got like ninety six percent of my picks correct up until the final four. So I'm gonna go with uh, I'm just I just went I just kind of freed freed it this time. Pick, freed pick my a mind. famous person. Let's see. Stephen A. Smith's bracket, anybody? This is going to be interesting. Final four, UConn, North Carolina, Purdue, Texas A&M. A&M? How about that? Yeah. A&M's a crazy pick. <laughs> that is pretty crazy. Uh, oh, and then my other crazy thing is I have UAB winning uh, their matchup and having an AAC matchup with FAU and UAB. To prove that we are dominant basketball <laughs> conference, and by dominant I mean at least top seven. So he has, <laughs> just to be clear, he has UAB beating San Diego State, then UAB beating Auburn, I presume. Yeah. Uh, and then FAU beating Northwestern and then beating UConn. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I, I just went crazy this year. You could just Venmo me the ten dollars. Just. Just send it over my way. My bracket's probably going to do better than yours. Let's be honest. It's you got not. Baylor winning it all, and I don't. So. Colin, I've won two of the last three years. Yeah. I'm basically wealthy beyond belief right now. <laughs> oh, for Bruni, those. Just, Bruni just banks all of his bracket money. He doesn't even put it in his actual bank. He $700, Colin, he just is, in, it. is in a fund that I've buried. You put it in like you put it in Bitcoin and just keep it for every year. Yeah, That's what you do. Fair. All right, let's talk about the other tournament that North Texas is participating in. Uh, we can call it the Bruni Bowl Part 2. But before we get started on the Bruni Bowl Part 2, I need to know your allegiance. So if you could please stand up so we can see if you're wearing an LSU shirt or North Texas shirt. <laughs> we're in, we're in the uh, <laughs> there you go. I don't even own I, – well, I own a LSU shirt, but it's not – Yeah, a, I know. It was a trick question. So I'm uh, glad you pledged your allegiance to North Texas. Um <laughs> You know, I've, gone on, a- I've gone on Baton Rouge radio today to talk about the Bruni Bowl. I've gone on an LSU podcast, our own LSU podcast, to talk LSU or Texas. Yeah. So if you want to hear me talking to LSU fans, you can go did over there. Did you spin any of that in an LSU way? Yeah. You know, you got to be like, oh, you know, they did this well. Well, I'm going to say the same thing there as I said here for the okay. most part. Well, that's good because I think I- everybody, I think the fans need an impartial Bruni. I'm a straight shooter. You know that. 
Well, I don't know. I've never seen you had to have be split twice a year. Okay, like this. here, this is Colin. Incredible. Look, let's 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 break this down. All right. Uh, North Texas is in the NIT, and first of all, it's can I cuss on this podcast? Should I don't I care. BS. It's bullshit that Thank they are you. playing at LSU. Demonetized. Right? Demonetized. <laughs> no money from this podcast. All right, it's bullshit and. LSU, I, I said this on LSU podcast radio, whatever it was. I was like, it's kind of, it's it, the NIT has, I don't know what the word is, but they have circumvented this to where it's only for the big schools now, right? So the the automatic qualifiers from the top conferences get the home court advantage. LSU is twenty spots below North Texas in both Ken Palm and the Net. Like their metrics don't add up. They're not like there's nothing here that says LSU should be hosting this game besides right. from the SEC. Um, I think the only ones that are hosting that aren't from those conferences actually there's only one. No, there's two. Yeah, Indiana State, Bradley, and Princeton. Those are the three. Uh, everybody else is is from the the power or the higher majors. Um, so you have like App State going to Wake Forest, so on and so forth. Um, LSU gets as a four seed. I was, we weren't sure if North Texas was going to make it, honestly. Like, I was kind of concerned, like, questioning if they were like in the field, but they make it, uh, comfortably, apparently. And now they play LSU. And if they win that game, they're going to have to play on the road against the winner of Seton Hall or St. Joseph's, or maybe St. Joseph would go to North Texas. I don't know. But I, I think we just spend the whole time talking about this game because this is, this is a big game for North Texas last year, the last two years, you know, they started off with like a swack opponent or something like that. And the NCAA basically said, Nope, no more of that. We're not having any bad teams or I don't want to say bad teams, but teams no that teams. teams that were outside the top, like 150 in, you know, the rent metrics or anything in our tournament. So here we are North Texas versus LSU. LSU beat North Texas back in November. I've said this, I said this, you know, on all the shows today, I was like, these are both teams are better than what they were in November, right? For North Texas, especially, I think having gone through what they went through with the injuries, and obviously they didn't have Rondell when they played this, uh, this game. I think this is their like culmination of their season now. Like, obviously, we wanted it to be the AAC tournament, but I don't know how realistic it was that a they could get clicking and healthy, like just in that short amount of time, but B they had to play FAU who mm -hmm. I think just, I know they lost their next game to temple. So it's like, what are we doing? But, um, <laughs> but still, I just don't think North Texas was able, is able to beat FAU, which is evident. So now you get a second chance. Mm -hmm. Let's go, let's go you play LSU. You beat LSU. I think you kind of make up for that loss early in the season, but also you kind of stamp, your year to be like, Hey, we are a good team. We are a good program. You know, all those close losses. I'm going to be repeating myself a lot from what we'd said in the, before the AAC tournament, but like it still holds true. You got to win one of these games. Yeah. Uh, LSU is definitely the chance to kind of get one back. Um, we talked about in last, last podcast, it would even be worth it for, for them to go to the NIT. I think with them coming up against LSU, this is a very big game. If it was not LSU, I think it'd be, different so like if they went up against like a xavier or uh i guess georgia or like a virginia tech or something and they lost i think we'd sit here and be like that sucks but it's not so bad but now with lsu i think there's more stakes to this to where not only if you win this game is it like okay we're better now let's see what we can do see if we can make a run at this thing but it's also if they lose i think there's a lot more to lose if you lose against this lsu team i think this is to to build on that point this feels like a a moment to where like you have to prove all right are you actually better than what we thought like are the injuries an actual excuse yeah like i don't know how to word it better than that like no like are you are you were you are you actually a six seed in the aac or if you were healthy are you a three seed or a exactly four seed? i kept saying there's like if they were fully healthy they would have won two more games or three more games to aac it's like okay that's all fine and dandy but ultimately if you keep losing like that ultimate at, at full strength they've lost to utsa and they've lost to fau 
Um, and now you play LSU, a very winnable game here. Like the metrics say you should, at the very least, you know, win or be favored or win you know, the game right there. <laughs> that's, what, yeah. that's what the metrics say. <laughs> um, they'll go into this game as like two point underdogs. And that's just because the game's at LSU. In my opinion, I think the only reason LSU is favored is because it's at LSU and it's a short turnaround. Like North Texas got the memo that they were playing at LSU and said, all right, load up the truck. Let's go. Like, let's go to the airport, fly over there. So um, I think North Texas is at a clear disadvantage there, but I mean, there's really no excuse here. This, if this North Texas team is as good as we thought they were this year, they should beat LSU. And I know it's on the road. I know it's a, you know, they lost them already this year. And I honestly don't think it's a great matchup for North Texas, but I, I don't care about matchups anymore. Like you, FAU was a bad matchup and you lost to them twice. You've lost them five straight times. Like, the you got to overcome at a certain point. That's what all great North Texas teams have done, right? Yep. Overcome at a certain point. Here's the thing too, is <clears throat> we, we talked about them being 20 st- spots ahead of LSU. LSU right now in Ken Palm is 91 to compare that to an American team. South Florida is 89. UAB is 106. Uh, Tulane dropped a lot, obviously, but they yeah. were in the hundreds and nineties for most of the season. So SMU is like 70. Uh, SMU now. Yeah. 71. Uh, Memphis is 74. So yeah. it's North Texas has seen the team this talented. Um, but to your point, when you get to the physicality of an SEC so that's, school like LSU, that's when this can become tough. Do you remember that? The the first the oh, first yeah. time they played? Oh yeah. I mean, and in in hindsight too, it's not even the bigs because we came out of that game saying, okay, Mulai needs to do a lot better. Robert Allen is a little undersized when you go up against a team like this. But thinking back. And we, we brought this point up last uh, last week is guard rebounding. I think that's also going to be huge in this game. I mean, I don't remember the LSU guards' names, any of them, um, but they're physical. They're big. They can rebound. Uh, North Texas, a team in the past that has always been that, hasn't been that this year. So not only are you undersized at the five position if you don't have Mulai out there, and Robert Allen is a great offensive rebounder, LSU is tall. Uh, Baker, is that his name? Will Baker? Yeah, Baker's the big. Will, yeah. Will Baker's big. And he's gonna he's gonna give you some trouble, and that's gonna kind of hold those two guys up. And then if you don't have any rebounding, the guard position it's gonna be tough. I I think we saw with FAU that like how Vlad kind of got the better of of North Texas in, in the games that they play. I think Will Baker had 16 points against North Texas first time they played. Um, they just posted him up a lot of times against yeah. Mulai and and um, Allen, and he was effective. And then. The biggest thing to me was Derek Fountain for LSU, who plays the four spot, was able to just drive right through Aaron Scott. It was arguably one of Aaron's worst games of the year. Like, not really close. He ended with four points on two of 12 shooting, uh, three turnovers, and honestly was getting killed defensively. So this is this is a big... And I, I know we've been on Aaron... It feels like we've been on Aaron a lot this yeah. year, right? And maybe rightfully so. I, I think we came into this year with really high expectations, that LSU game to me, if I'm Aaron Scott, you you watch the film on that game, you have to be steaming mad. Yeah. You have to be going into this game saying, nobody is scoring on me. You have to go in this game saying, they are going to feel me. I'm going to score the ball. Like, this is a redemption game for North Texas, but more than anything else, Aaron Scott has to, we've seen him get NBA draft love. Like, we've seen all this stuff. Aaron, this is an NIT game on the road against LSU, a team you've already lost to. This is where you have to step up. That's what I'm interested to see, honestly. Yeah. Individual matchup wise. Like, cause they are bigger. Yeah. But Aaron Scott should be able to, if not win his matchup, at least be even. Well, I mean, like, you and I are already have already, and we watch a lot of college basketball every year, especially when we're doing prospect stuff. Like we watch a lot of defenders and Aaron, we feel like we've already called him this as an NBA level. Yeah. If you were to get drafted prospect. And if he, if you can't do it against an LSU team, and fountain then it's maybe maybe not you know yeah it was it's more it's because he's more of like a you know we know this it's like he's more of like a help side guy he's more of right. like a, a wing guy that can can really space out but i mean we don't have the luxury of having like a big five that can help him here all right you have to hold your own here so that's the tough yeah. part um i'm interested to see you mentioned guard rebounding but like ruben um how he plays in this game i think north texas definitely has the better guards 
in this oh, game. Yeah. Um, and they're going to have to shoot the three ball really well. That's what happened last game. North Texas went 12 of 32 from three, so 38%, which is is good, not great, but good. Uh, North Texas has the better shooters. North Texas, did you know UNT is up to 14th in the country in three-point percentage? But they're around that every year, though. Yeah, 37.7%, and LSU is like bottom 15 in the country in three-pointers allowed, I think it is. Here, let me just double-check that number. Um, no, they're 309th in three-pointers allowed, so – um, that's where UNT is going to have to, I, I mean, really, by 309th, you mean that they're like they, top 50 in the country and defending the three? Is that what you meant? No, 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 I'm sorry. Bottom? They are 309th and three point three pointers allowed. So they allow, they're in the bottom, like 60 and three pointers allowed team shoot a lot of threes on them. Okay. That's that, 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 that was yeah. kind of weird. Team, shoes, team, yeah, shoot, I got team you. shoot a lot of threes on them. Uh, and that's where North Texas is going to have to. It's interesting also, UNT is obviously 360th in the country in... Luck? Tempo. <laughs> oh, luck too? And luck. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's ever happened before. A team at the bottom in tempo and luck. <laughs> so you're just like walking it up and getting unlucky every time. Uh, LSU is top 70 in the country in tempo. So contrasting styles. It's just a really interesting game on paper. Yeah. I don't... I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I feel like North Texas, if this game was on a neutral site, I would feel a lot better about North Texas. I still think they can win, but like the travel to go there in two days and play, it feels like a lot. Also, for LSU, this is kind of like the the expectations for these two teams was different coming into the year. Yeah. Like North Texas had bigger aspirations than this. They'd already yeah. won this tournament. LSU won two games last year. Yeah. So it's like LSU is trying to get here. North Texas is trying to get better than that, but they're like dropped down to you. So it's like, I understand like North Texas is going to be locked in. I'm not doubting that, but it's just different approaches here. It'd be like LSU fans are are excited about NIT. And I Here's think a question. UNT fans are too, but it's, it's different. If you mentioned the, the turnaround and having to drive to Baton Rouge and whatever, does that even matter if you're the, if you're still like, I know you said LSU is probably in favor by like two, but I feel like at North Texas should, most people should think that North Texas should win this game. Like that's the expectation going in, is it not? I I think and you you talked about we talked about it. It's like at a certain point you have to overcome things. Last year's team beat Oklahoma State right. on the road. Right, overcoming things, but LSU is not last year's Oklahoma State, not I last agree. year's Wisconsin, I agree. not this year's FAU, not this year's SMU when they were good, not this year's Memphis even in terms of talent. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you're gonna get the rematch, quote unquote. But I feel like anything, like even if like anything other than a win is like a just a complete failure. It is. I agree. It is. It is a failure, and it is disappointing. And I don't know. I don't have anything else on it because it's kind of just like beating a dead horse because it's the same right. after losing the AAC, in that it's like. You had chance after chance this well, year. Well, see, the AAC in this in this instance is different because FAU is a really really good team. They're the yeah. eight seed in the NCAA tournament. You know, this is it's. I mean, the American, as we've talked about, is a very talented basketball conference, and North Texas has played. I mean, besides LSU, they played St. John's. St. Yeah. John's was top twenty five or twenty five in Ken Palm. Yeah. Like it's not even like this. Like this in my head is a game where it's like. This is like a conference game to me where we're looking at a two lane or we're looking at a, I can't even, a, not UAB, but like a ECU in terms of expectations going in. Like, I think that North Texas needs to be in this game going, it can be dangerous. LSU, I'm not trying to say LSU is going to be a pushover. Yeah. But North Texas should win this game. I, I understand what you're saying. It's like they've played St. John, they've played Boise, they've played Mississippi State, uh, FAU, obviously. They've played like actual teams this year. Um, Northern Iowa is decent as well. So it's like, they're not going to be scared. I, I never said, I don't think they're going to be scared. I think the matchup is the only concern for me. But again, it goes back to at a certain point, are you going to just keep getting punched in the face? Yeah. Like we know, we get it. You're not big. We get it. We we don't have the defensive rebounding that we've had in years past. Like that, it's not as sharp um, of an offense maybe as we've, we've had in years past. But like, North Texas teams are just 
built to win games maybe they're not supposed to win they're built to just make games kind of ugly if they can't if they can't win outright like and just find a way to win and they haven't done that this year and so again i'm gonna repeat what i said going to the aac tournament at a certain point you have to do that if this north texas program under ross hodge is going to be the same one under that it wasn't in grant mccaslin it has to start winning those games yeah so and what better time than than now so uh Who's your pick? North Texas. <laughs> North Texas. What's why is why why'd you pause? I'm taking North Texas. I had to think about it for a second, Colin. I got to oh, okay. I'm, I, I, I think came locked in, I came locked in with my answer. I think North, North Texas, Texas wins. I think they hit enough threes. I I think they're better equipped now, or hopefully. Well, the thing about it is I feel better about North Texas in this respect. Against FAU, they said we're selling out to stop the threes, right? And that's why Vlad and they FAU they did their thing. Paint. Yeah, North, you shouldn't have to worry about that with LSU. They have a point guard that doesn't shoot threes. All right, you have other guys that are fine shooters. You have a couple really good shooters, but the rest are like average shooters at best. You're not playing FAU. To your point, you should be able to collapse on the paint and force them into tough yeah. twos, which they didn't do last time. So hopefully the defense is farther along and you should be able to um, crash and force them into either threes that they don't want to take or tough twos and yeah. no fouling. Can't, you can't foul. North Texas has been really bad. If at they fouling. foul out, if any, if Aaron, if Aaron or Ruben foul out, I might lose my mind. Yeah. North Texas is, you know, North Texas finished for dead last in the conference in free throw attempt rate defense. Dang. Like teams are just going to the line on them. If you give that will lose you the game against LSU. That's crazy. Actually, that's, that's it. Yeah, can't can't be doing that. No. Do you think they're right. primed for a run if they beat LSU? This is such a hard field. Um, uh, I'll be if they have to beat LSU, then like LSU, okay, yes, very doable. Seton Hall should be in the NCAA tournament. Seton yeah, Hall. I don't. I don't know anything about Seton. Go Hall, look up their maybe. metrics. They won. They went thirteen and seven in the Big East. They're the first team to win 13 games in a power in a high major conference and not make the tournament. I think either ever or this century. So basically, ever. Basically, ever. Yeah, like Seton Hall is legitimate. So you gotta win that game most likely, and then you'll have to beat Princeton, Providence, UNLV, Boston College. Princeton's terrifying. Yeah, Prince is another really good team. So instead of like, this is my point. Last year, you got to start off with kind of, it was two easy games, right? It wasn't just two, right? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Here, let me pull it up. Where's Kim Palm? I think Kim Palm's crashing because everybody in the world is on it right now. <laughs> you know how genius it is, dude. Let's just make up. Let's just make up a metric system, a system that like rates basketball programs, and start selling it for like two dollars a piece. And it works. Oh, it's beautiful. It's great. That's, that's what I'm saying. So uh, we can let's, let's let's invest in that, Colin. We can be the next Ken Palm. Let's put our names together. What are we what are we gonna I mean Ken Palm that is his name though? Yeah, I know, but let's put oh, our okay. names together. Uh Mitchy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of <laughs> Brunel. Brunel. <laughs> the Brunel rating? That the sounds Brunel like, rating. That sounds like something you'd see. Except our rating would just be an eye test. We just look at them and be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Colin and I rating every team on a scale of one to one hundred. Be like, yeah. And every and every every team has like a little video clip you can play for, and it's our it's like our two second reaction of that team. <laughs> like, ah, they, they can shoot it. Ah, yeah. Defense. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's funny. Um. <laughs> What was I saying? I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, last year's North NIT run, North Texas started off with Alcorn and Sam Houston State at home. Like they won, they got those two games, and then they were able to go at Oklahoma State, Wisconsin, UAB. So you really just had to win three games. I'm not saying that Sam Houston State was bad last year, but you get what I'm saying. This year, you're going to have to win five games against teams just as good as you, if not better. Yeah. This is a little different. But you could play Kansas State, Tyler Perry versus yeah, Jason Edwards. Let's talk about it real quick. Apparently, there's some beef happening. Colin. Yeah, so, so shout out Ethan Plinsky. 
I think it's how you say his last name from the NT Daily. Yeah, shut up. Um, shut up, Ethan, man. Great, yeah, he great asked. Uh, <laughs> he asked Ruben about possibly facing Kansas State in the final, and Ruben said he don't want that. I don't think he wants to see us at all. His last game in a college uniform versus us. I don't think he wants that. Apparently, Ruben was laughing when he said that. But then Tyler saw it and quoted it and said, "I don't believe you." Rube didn't say this. He of all people knows better. Drez also uh, said something, uh, quoted it and said, "Friendly fire." Uh, and then Abu had laughing faces. So we got we got Mean Green alum all over the country. Also, Xavier and Kansas State are both in the NIT, by the way. So it would be absolutely hilarious if North Texas somehow outlasted all of them. Right. <laughs> guys, like, guys, why did y'all leave? Y'all are just in the same spot here. Yeah, come on back. Y'all should have just never left. We just run it back. Mm. Golly. Abu still has eligibility, I think. Could come Abu, back. come on back. Come on yeah. back, man. Come just, on. Uh, but then again, he is closer to home. That's why he kind of... Oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot he's from, from the north. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, I thought that was that was some... That'd be a dream scenario, though. Kansas State, chance. North Texas in the final. Dream path. North Texas beats LSU. North Texas beats Seton Hall. I guess... Well, do you want a home game? Because I guess I think they would host... How is that going to work? Is it, I think like, record? Be... Or is no, it, like, availability in the stadium? Uh, maybe, but I what's think it's the seating. On... Like, what's St. Joseph's seating over? I'm North assuming St. Joseph is ranked lower than L- than North Texas because they're playing the one seed and not the four seed. I guess that's true. So, all right, beat LSU, beat St. Joe's at home, get the fan mm-hmm. interest going. Mm-hmm. Beat. You need somehow <laughs> UNLV could upset Princeton. Boston College is not going to upset Providence, probably. Yeah, Providence is scary. So um, you don't want to see Providence. I just don't want to see Providence. Beat UNLV in the quarters. Yeah, beat be UNLV. Probably hosting again. Yep. Host it again. And then go to Indiana and beat Xavier with a boo. Then beat Kansas State in the championship game. There's that would be absolutely terrible. Baton Rouge, North Texas, two games. Fly to Xavier. <laughs> No, 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 no. It would be in uh, Indiana. The final, the semis in the final are oh, well, it's uh, Hinkle Field Indiana. House. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot about it. So we're just flying to Indiana. In a real place. But yes, that would be bad. That would be bad. Yep. And then we just need to see Kansas State. And uh, then you have the full the full North Texas uh, alumni reunion. You, get, you, you beat Xavier and you beat Kansas State. And then you win. And then North Texas is defending champions of the NIT. And then nobody is ever winning. allowed to transfer from North Texas ever again. Yes. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Rubin. If you win the NIT again, you cannot leave, okay? And that's yeah. your rule. If you win the NIT, you should have everybody locked in for the rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. That's it. All right. Uh, that's all we got for y'all today. I'm going to go probably try to take a nap. Because then now I found out my AAU coach, the head coach I work with, isn't even co- he can't be at practice today. So now I have you, You're running the whole practice? I got to get the practice run down and ready everything. I just, How's it feel? We've, we, AAU is basically NBA, so we have a lot of work to do, Colin. We have a lot yeah. of work to do. What's what's um, what's today's? What, what are you working on today? Rebounding, mm. rebounding, Colin. We we can't rebound for shit. We just absolutely just get that is killed. three cuss words on the podcast today, all from you. No, I'm just stressed, Colin. I don't know what to say. I'm out of groceries. I need to go to the grocery store. Mm. I'm just everywhere, everywhere. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it. We'll um, we'll be on Twitter. Thank you all for tweeting at us and telling us to do the podcast. We were gonna do it, but you encouraged us to to really get on top. Do of it, it sooner. So, yeah, yeah. Do it sooner. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back. I don't. I don't want to do one tomorrow after the game. I guess we'll but... do one if they lose. I guess, but we won't do it tomorrow. We'll do it like the day after, and then we'll do it if they win their second game or lose their second game. We'll see. We'll maybe just get on and just talk shit. Who knows? We'll see. I mean, in the, if they destroy LSU, we have to get on. Yeah. Because I got to see your reaction. I'll be at the game. <laughs> just, just. Bree's Bri going to be wearing all black. <laughs> I'm wearing neutral colors. Sorry. We're no, green. I meant all black for the funeral. But Oh, wow. 
There you go. I'm interested to see the crowd. I don't know how the crowd will be. I think it'll be decent. Yeah. Report report live. Hey, you can live tweet from the game if you'd like. <laughs> That's nasty. I'm gonna go up to Ross beforehand. <laughs> Ross, Ross, <laughs> Ross. Hello. How are you feeling? How are you feeling today, coach? <laughs> How are you feeling, coach? I told you before the game, the Kansas State game, I saw Reem and Tyler. Mm-hmm. Gave them big hugs. Yeah, did you hit him with a no, I didn't. I didn't interview them. They were about Dang. to play. I got there kind of late. Mm. All right, we will talk to y'all later. Thank y'all for joining us. Love y'all. Goodbye.